So you're joining the army. When do you actually find out your duty station they're going to go to after you complete your training? Now before I get started on this video, I just want to add in this little cut right here. You guys have requested this, I have finally done it, and I have a P.O. Box. So if you're one of those crazy people who keep requesting and wanting me to have a P.O. Box so you can send me stuff, I'm going to have it in the description of all my videos from now on. So if you ever you know, get the feeling that you want to do that, that is there for you. I just want to let you guys know that if you wanted to do that. What's going on guys? So today I'm going to cover three little topics based around when you find out your duty station. It's probably going to be a quick little video. But the first thing that I want to cover that most of you are probably curious about is if you are enlisting into the army, when are you actually going to find out what duty station you're going to go to? A lot of times whenever you tell people that, you know, hey, I enlisted into the army, they're like, oh, where are you going to be stationed at? Well, you don't know because you haven't gone to basic training yet. So the answer to this one is going to be pretty simple. And then I'll get on to the other things such as when you can actually guarantee your duty station or almost guarantee your duty station or if you're the officer, uh, you can kind of also guarantee it mostly when you do it that way. So when are you going to actually figure out when your when are you going to actually figure out where you're going to go for your first duty station? Well, it's going to vary by a few days, maybe a few weeks or so, but in general, after basic training, you're not going to know where you're going to be going, but then at AIT, your advanced individual training, or for those of you guys who are doing one station unit training, the last week or two weeks of that, you are actually going to figure out where your first duty station is going to be located at. You're going to get your first orders, and then the last couple weeks, you're going to be looking at everybody and be like, oh, hey, you're going to you know someplace nearby me, blah, 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 we'll hang out or whatever. So the last couple of weeks of AIT, so probably I would say at least two weeks, if not one week out before you graduate AIT, you will get your orders to where you're gonna go. And this is for active duty people. If you're reserves or National Guard, you already know where you're going because you selected that before you even enlisted. Because, you know, if you're reserves, it doesn't have to be in the same state as you, but you should have it pretty close to you because you're gonna have to be driving there or maybe even flying there once a month. And then if you're in the National Guard, it should be in the same state as you. So you're gonna know that right off the bat. But uh, one thing that a lot of people are curious about is can you actually guarantee or pick the duty station that you wanna to go to? And in your initial enlistment contract, again, if you're not reserves or National Guard, if you're active duty, you cannot pick that in your initial enlistment contract, but you can later on in your career, or at least you can have a little wish list. Now, you've, in, you've been in the military for you know three years or so, it's time for you to re-enlist into the Army. At this point in time, you can put a wish list of basically three different duty stations that you want to go to in your re-enlistment contract. Preferably, you might be able to get one guaranteed. I'm not 100% on how this is going to go because I've never re-enlisted. I'm never going to be able to re-enlist because I'm about to be an officer in three days at the time of recording this video. So I'm not going to be able to personally experience the whole re-enlisting process because for officers, it's completely different. But I do know you can get duty stations in your re-enlistment contract. So that's gonna be a possibility for you. If you are wanting to go someplace really bad, you might not get it your first contract, you might not ever go there, but if you wanna stay in the military for a longer period of time, the odds are, you know, if you wanna get stationed to a certain place, that you can just keep putting that on your re-enlistment contract. If for some reason you don't get it, your one, two, or three slots, the first re-enlistment, if you really want to stay in the military and do the whole 20, it's uh, you can keep on doing that. And every time you re-enlist, you can pick the uh, preferred duty stations that you want to go to. And now we have your officers. So when are the officers, you know, future second lieutenants like myself, when are you going to find out where your first duty station is going to be? It's a little bit complicated for officers, a little bit different than enlisted soldiers. Like most things, officers enlisted is different for a lot of different things, just like the whole re-enlisting process is just not the same whatsoever. But when are officers gonna find out? At the same time that they figure out whenever their bullock is going to be. So whenever you're doing ROTC, you will go through the whole assessments process and you'll be assigned a branch and you'll be assigned a duty station at the same time if you are active duty. Now, sometimes there might be a few variances where it might take a little bit longer for some reason, for some crazy reason, 
that they might come out of sync. But in general, you should find out your duty station as an officer at the same time you figure out when you are going to Bullock. Except there's a little difference whenever it comes to officers. So say for me, I'm on RTC, I'm about to commission as a second lieutenant. You can do these two things called ADSO and BRADSO, which is basically where you kind of guarantee that you get the duty station of choice and you can guarantee almost the branch of choice that you get. But in return for doing that, you have to actually basically sign up for an extra three years of service. So if you end up getting the duty station of your choice as an officer wanting to uh, commission, if you end up getting that, that means you have to serve an extra three years. If you end up choosing, I think it's um, ADSO or Brad, Bradso, it's a little confusing. I didn't do this because I'm not active duty since I'm commissioning reserves. I got to basically pick my MOS and pick my duty station and everything again. Reserves is different from active duty, but if you're active duty and you're trying to commission as an officer, you can basically sign a Bradso or an ADSO that if you are selected for that, it will give you your duty station of your choice and it will give you your branch of choice. And then what those things will do in return is each one of those would add an extra three years of service onto your enlistment as an officer. And that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, hit that like button. That would be awesome. If you want to stick around some more videos, hit the subscribe button. That would be even better. If you're not following me on Instagram and Snapchat, the links are right here. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you uh, later. Yeah.